Hello, hello, welcome, welcome back. Okay, today, as promised, we're gonna do a myofascial tool class. Okay, so I'll first um, do a brief overview of what I'm actually talking about and um, why we should use them, and then we'll do it. Okay, so this is my super fancy toolkit that I have in the clinic. And it looks like I get to carry around like lots of knives and stuff, but they're basically pretty dull. And I just got this one since I'm a professional and it's easier to have them around the clinic. But before I had that, uh, I used uh, cheaper ones at home. For example, here I have a nice little jade one, which I use in my shower. And uh, that one was nice until I dropped it and it has some sharp edges. So now I have to be careful how I use it. And before that, I used to use the classic Asian soup spoon which I'll do most of today since it's a pretty good household item. And even before that was the butter knife. Okay, it's definitely worth upgrading, okay? There are cheaper ones made of buffalo bone on Amazon for very cheap. They were okay, but they don't do well in the shower, the buffalo bone ones, they will eventually split from the humidity. So I prefer if you're in the shower and careful, the jade works the best. If you're gonna do sessions outside with uh, face creams or any kind of other lubricant, the soup spoon's honestly pretty good. My girlfriend prefers the soup spoon over the metal ones. And uh, if you're a serious athlete and really gonna be spending a lot of time with this, I would just get one of the nice surgical steel ones because it'll never wear out and you'll have it forever, okay? So first things first, uh, how do these things work and why do we want to use them? They work pretty simply, uh, basically by scraping along the body. So if I get nice and close here, so I'm going to work on, let's see, here's my face. See, I feel kind of like tense in the forehead, you know. So I just take my soup spoon and I make these sliding with pressure movements over the muscles. And you're going to start to see pretty quickly how the right side of my face is going to get kind of red. You can see the pressure line from where I'm pushing just a little firmly, but not painful. It feels pretty good, you know. But there's a sore spot somewhere here. It feels kind of tender and slides nice and easy. And so as I do this, basically what's going on is I'm stirring up all of the circulation and metabolic waste that sits in between all the cells. So when I use it on my face, you want to use it very gently and not try to make any kind of deep uh, abrasion or uh, burst any of the blood vessels, which I'll show you an example of later, which you do want to try to do when you're working more aggressively on the bigger muscles and limbs of the body. So if you're working on the face for like a cosmetic reason to get rid of puffiness or to try to tone up the face or things like that, uh, you basically want to use a good amount of lubrication and just keep the strokes pretty light. Okay. And you also don't want to overdo it because you'll get a raspberry looking thing, which is what I said I'd show you in a second. Okay. So uh, that's more for cosmetic and feeling good. It helps take the tension out from under the eyes and the jaw feels really, really nice to work on. So that's all uh, really well and good. And we'll experience that in a minute. And the other bigger reasons is its role and what it actually does to the fascia. And the fascia in our body is what basically makes us look like the way we look. It's what is mostly in charge of maintaining our shape in our body. So like when we stretch the muscles and try to do the chest opening, you know, we're sort of addressing the muscles, but it's much more important that the fascia in the body gets spread open here and that the fascia in the back of the body starts to come together more. And that way that sling of fascia, that's basically like a, like a Spider-Man web that's inside of our whole body, that that web is more appropriately balanced in the body. And there's lots of techniques for manual manipulation of the fascia, sliding techniques, gentle pressure, waiting for it to release, things like that. And those are all well and fine, but they're hard to do to yourself. And I just find that using these fascia tools, it basically just mixes up the whole uh, organization of the fascia and it gives you an opportunity to uh, realign all the fascial fibers after you basically just break it up. 
The third part of this is that when you do dig deep enough and get a raspberry like sensation, what's going on is you're breaking up a lot of scar tissue and you're also bursting some of the superficial capillaries in the body, which is a good thing because they'll grow back pretty quickly. It's like when you get a bruise or a contusion, uh, they grow back and they grow back stronger and more plentiful. So if you do do deep work with these tools, you will be uh, for a long term increasing the circulation to that area. So it's great for developing circulation into an area. It's great for relaxing muscles. And it's great for if you're working heavy, more heavily, more deeply, like I will on my chest today. It's really great for actually breaking up adhesions if you're sore from lifting weights or working in the garden or for me, rock climbing and doing manual therapy, playing my instruments, things like that. Okay, so let's get right into it. I'm going to start from the forearms up. And we'll probably end nice and, and gentle with a cool down for the face, okay? So I'm gonna start um, about describing the difference between the different tools you might have in your house or that you might buy. So the butter knife is obviously much thinner and this one uh, isn't as round as I would like. So it has more of, a, it's more like a square or shaped like a rectangle. So it has a firm edge on it. When you have a firm edge on your tool, this is really, really great for working on the superficial fascia of the body, meaning like just at the skin layer. You can very easily grab and drag the skin and give you a scraping sensation kind of superficially. And that's what we want when we're working very shallow in the body. I have a nicer tool that actually simulates the edge to this. It's just a little bit more rounded, um, a little bit more blunt, but it's just as kind of angular so that you're really not meant to dig deep into the body with a very edgy tool like this, okay? Whereas something more like the jade stone that's a little bit thicker and a little bit rounder, that you can start to really uh, press into the muscles because it's not gonna damage the skin at all, especially when it's nice and smooth with some cream, okay? So, uh, so depending on what tool you work with, you have to gauge the depth, okay? So if you're using the butter knife and it's not very round, I'm just gonna work superficial for a little bit and then um, I'll go through my other toys and eventually we'll go deep. Okay, so let's just follow along here. What I'm gonna do is use a little bit of this uh, massage cream here, which is just very generic. It's called Free Up. I honestly wouldn't recommend it. It's really not my favorite but uh, I have it here at the clinic. So I'm just gonna spread it on a little bit on here. And I'm gonna take care of actually my right forearm has been working harder for me. So I'm gonna put this here and already I'm just kind of spreading it out over my arm. Okay, I don't, you don't need too much with this stuff. This stuff doesn't absorb very well, so I'll put most of it back. One of the other tricks is if you are working with lubrication, uh, to be careful about not getting on your gripping hand because it makes it a lot hold, hold, harder to hold the tool and that becomes uh, tiring in its own right. Okay, so here we go. I've got my forearm here and I'm just gonna scrape up the forearm along the back coming up towards my elbow. I've got a mosquito bite here, so I'm just gonna run around that and make sure I don't irritate my skin too much there. But what you wanna get is this sensation that you're basically just pressing and sliding up the body. And you wanna value the repetition of strokes over the depth. So you really don't wanna be digging uh, particularly hard, okay? You also want the arm to be pretty relaxed when you do it, because you wanna feel the muscles pretty soft and just kind of gliding out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna to try to close these blinds, see if the light can be a little bit better. Okay, maybe a little bit less glare on the arm. Good. All right, so as I'm sliding up the arm, you can start to see that I'm developing some redness here on the arm, right, all along this stripe compared to, say, here where I haven't worked yet, okay? And you can see where I demonstrated earlier, digging in deeper, also redness is occurring. This is that circulatory effect I was talking about, about, st about um, stimulating the blood vessels and getting this to come. Okay, so I'm just gonna spend some time grooving up the arm. You know, if you want to work more like you have a lot of swelling in the arm, then you definitely wanna work superficially like we're doing now. And I also put my arm up on a ledge in the shower, like hanging like this on something with the fingers, and then I'll go down the arm just like I'm showing, you know, nice and gentle. 
and that uh, helps to draw a lot of the uh, lymph and circulation out of my forearms when they get super pumped after a long day. If you're a musician playing double bass or something like that, you can definitely relate to that. Okay, so right now I'm just trying to look for stimulation and redness here. Now, of course, I have some professional knowledge here. So I know this area here, this little nice little bulk of muscle you can see here, these are actually my finger muscles. Those are the extensors of the, of the fingers. And this is the problem area for a lot of elbows. So working up even from the side of the arm here, right, I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth over this whole thing, just running over that speed bump, trying to smooth it out, okay? Now, you can also get a lot of information by the feel of the tool in your hand. When you're running it over the skin, you want to note if the skin feels smooth or if it feels really lumpy. If it feels lumpy, that's a big problem, and you want to spend a lot of time there just literally ironing it out the way we're doing now. Okay. Mine's doing pretty well because I haven't had to work too aggressively lately, unfortunately, due to the... COVID situation, but I'm also going to ride this up into my deltoid arm here. Okay, here we're getting a great example, okay? So I haven't been pushing any harder than I was down here. Here the skin feels smooth and easy. There's a few bumps, and I'm just riding over it, moderate pressure. I came up the arm, and when I got to here, Again, I'm actually pushing even lighter, but look what's starting to happen to the skin. It's starting to kind of raspberry up, whereas my forearm, if I can get it to focus, not such a big reaction, right? But here, this was instantaneous without any extra pressure. I'm really not digging in or doing anything special. I'm just riding over it like I did earlier. And now you can see how the scar tissue here is starting to break up and give this response. This has a funny name. I think it's pronounced petechiae or something like that. It really doesn't matter. It's just blood vessels bursting from congested scar tissue. So this will show up very quickly if you're working in an area that is congested and it'll show up without you having to make any extra effort or dig any deeper. So remember, just because you're holding a tool, you don't need to start to try to excavate the, the entire body, right? Just let the tool do the work, keep the grip super relaxed. And if you find a spot that you need to work on, it'll present itself like this with this kind of uh, show, okay? So right now I'm getting maybe 10 to 20 strokes over it. And you can see it's getting a little bit uh, darker red. Again, I'm not pushing any harder. I'm just riding over that area that seems to be responding. And since I'm still using the butter knife, I'm really not going hard on the pressure here. Yesterday in the shower, I used the jade stone on my upper trapezius muscles. And you can see that this ended up turning into that kind of bruise-like thing, right? It looks like I got hit by a baseball bat, but it really doesn't hurt. Uh, I wasn't doing anything more aggressive than you're watching right now, which I'm sure looks pretty gentle, you know? It just was ready to pop, basically. And when I rode over it in the shower, it showed up very quickly without much force at all. Okay, so that's how you know you're in, in the right direction. Okay, so yeah, you can try all kinds of funny things, different angles, right? If you have rotator cuff problems, I really like to work back here in this position. In fact, I did in the shower the other day. You can see I got some of that scar tissue to come up here on the border of the scapula, right? Just by reaching under, again, I just kind of rest my head on my hand. I've got the shower, so I just slide along like that. Right now, I'm not going to work there a second time. It's still a little bit sore, and I want to focus on the front of my body. Okay, so that was a good find here. I'm going to add a little bit more slippery stuff, and I'm curious to see what I find on the side of my deltoid because that blew up really quickly, so I'm wondering if there's something else in here hiding. So you can, you can always use more pressure if it feels good, but, for example, now I'm pushing harder, and I'm not, I'm not really finding that uh, result, right? This looks like it's like gonna explode, barely touched it. Here I'm digging quite a bit deeper, mm, not much going on. I'm getting a good circulatory response. This is probably great for recovery for my muscles if I've been playing my instrument a lot or something like that. But um, looks like there wasn't a big kind of scar-like problem for me to take care of here. 
Okay, whereas the front, boom, just blew right up. So I'm suspicious that there's something going on in my chest area these days. So I'm gonna ride this up, right? If I stick my arm out, you can see how this chest muscle wraps up into the arm right here. So I'm just gonna, again, slack the arm, but ride up into that. And this, um, this is starting to, because of the angle of this, is starting to not work for me. So I'm gonna switch over to my Asian soup spoon, another common household item, one of my favorite uh, utensils to eat with, actually. I don't know why, it just entertains me. So I'm going to find this line. You can see the anterior deltoids coming down like this. And here, if I squeeze the chest here, you can see the chest muscle come in, right? Here's the tendon of the chest muscle kind of underneath that deltoid muscle. So I'm going to take the soup spoon and I'm just going to carve out that area. Okay. <clears throat> and you don't have to be so specific. You don't have to know exactly what you're working on. You just need to know the general area and where things generally attach, right? I want to work on my chest, so we're working here, okay? Um, it's always helpful to put the muscle a little bit on stretch when you do this because it's going to expose more surface area. But it also depends how you want to work, right? If you want to work more superficially, having it on stretch is good because you'll get more surface area to scrape along the top of. But if you want to work deeper into the muscle, you actually want to slack the muscle forward so that it's nice and soft so that you can reach something very deep inside. And for now, I recommend starting with the muscle fairly taut. And you're just looking for that kind of tension in the front of the shoulders here. Okay. And for the record, um, I'm in decent shape, but I really haven't done any exercise that you haven't seen me do for the last two months. I've done only the classes through quarantine. And, um, and the classes here on YouTube live. I don't do push-ups or pull-ups anymore. It's been over a year since I've done any type of strength training for my body. I developed it a lot when I was younger, so it tends to stick around. But uh, I just wanna make the point that being in good shape is more about taking care of the health of your tissues and keeping the body balanced than it is about trying to develop power in the body, okay? So again, I'm just scraping along that angle here. It's looking good and pretty good. I'm gonna switch this down. I wanna to get to my upper chest, okay? The clavicle is huge for me. The clavicle is like one of the most important points that we can get to for the body. Okay, so you wanna find the collarbone and find this area right here. This part just below the collarbone is the upper chest fibers that run across the body into the upper arm, just where we we're just working that attachment there. And those chest fibers, you can you can feel them if you cross the arm across like this, you'll feel them pop out right there, right? So what you want to, what you, this is really important because this pulls the shoulders around to the front, more so than the lower chest fibers. Those will tend to drop the shoulder a little bit more, but the upper chest fibers will give us this caved in kind of feeling that we know really dogs the neck quite a bit. So we're gonna go over here and we're just gonna run all the way along the upper chest fibers, trying to peel this open, okay? I'm actually just gonna grab some of my lubricant here. Just <clears throat> we only need a, a thin layer for this, so no need to get all globbed up, okay? Sometimes I, you can even use the same arm, right? This is actually funny, as I, as I pull with the spoon this way, it actually opens the chest muscle, right? I'm stretching the chest while I scrape it open. Super powerful technique. Here I'm using a little bit more pressure and you can see how it's leaving that, right? The blood is coming, but also you can see how I'm scraping it out, flushing out that whole area. Oh, and here we're starting to see the result again. Okay, I was digging a little bit deeper, but remember I was digging everywhere you see redness. I'm digging the same amount. But for whatever reason, right, there was something here under the surface waiting for me. So this is going to, I'm going to spend just a quick time, a couple of maybe 10, 15, 20 strokes. And once I get a good reaction there, that's, that's enough for me now. Okay. So good. We covered this part. Okay. Uh, it does work pretty well on the inside of the forearm. <clears throat> These muscles are generally a little bit more tough. 
So I usually use a little bit of a harder tool. I would definitely stick with the soup spoon for that. Probably use the curved edge here, which fits pretty nicely on the side of my forearm. So I'm just going to pick up. I need a little bit, a little bit of the goopy stuff. Get that on my forearm here. Again, just rest my arm, super comfortable. Flex the wrist so the muscles are soft. Okay, I'm going to take that long edge and just scrape up and down the arm like this. You can certainly use these tools and techniques on the fingers too. In fact, inside the palm is one of my favorite places to work. Right, the hand closes when I push on the tendons and I'm basically just slide sandwiching it, sliding up the fingers. If you have anything like trigger finger, this is really a home run for you. you basically, if I were to be developing trigger finger problems in the hands, spending five minutes here, five minutes here, getting the results and going to the hand, inside of the hand, I'm working, oh, let's get some focus, right? working through the thumb area, just scraping out the tendons, right? going all the way up the fingers. If you know you have a really specific problem, like for here, I feel a little bit a little bit sensitivity in the web space, but not much. But most importantly, I feel the crinklies. Here, when I slide up the two finger tendons here, I hear or I feel that in my body, like tiny little bumps that I'm smoothing out. That's awesome. That's what I want. So I'm going to combine that opening technique as I stretch the finger open, making the tendon right more surface area for the tendon as I just slide along that a few times. Okay, and yeah, it's getting a little bit more smooth. Okay, that's probably already enough for one day. That's why I like these techniques because it only takes a few minutes. You know, you just work on one problem real quick, go on with your day after the shower. Okay, let's hit the left side and then we'll get up to the neck and face. We're so I'm getting too carried away. We're gonna run out of time. All right, so I'm gonna switch back to my handy dandy butter knife here. And I'm just gonna move that up a little bit. Again, just resting my arm. I'm gonna go ahead and spread this stuff everywhere I know I'm gonna work already. So that way it's there waiting for me later. Okay, but I'm gonna start here on the top of the forearm, just riding up. And again, using I'm using the, the sharper tool, so I'm using very little pressure and just waiting to see. <clears throat> is there a spot that my body, you know, needs to react? This actually feels a lot smoother than the right side, like by a lot. There's almost no bumps whatsoever inside of it. So that's good. And I'm already getting the redness, so I'll probably move on from here. And um, sometimes when I was working really hard with my arms and rock climbing, I would have to spend a good three, four minutes just in this crevice here, and it would blow up just like, just like this thing did. You know, it would just be instant. Like I'd just touch it and like, you know, like five strokes later, it was like, looked like a bomb hit. Okay, so I'm just riding up the arm here. And you don't really have to worry about hurting yourself with this these techniques too much. I mean, you know, as long as you're not really digging under any creases, it's very unlikely that, is, that a surface level scraping approach, even, even on the sensitive parts of the neck, it may feel a little bit funny to the nerves, but so far I have not hurt myself and I can't think of many places that I haven't scraped fairly aggressively already. Okay, so again, this side, I'm working the same I did in my forearm and you see how I'm not getting that reaction here. I'm not getting that same thing to show up and I'm, and I'm doing the same stuff. I'm really not doing anything differently. So when you find one of those things, you, you can feel like, Wow, yeah, I really got the right spot. It was really ready to respond. And just goes to show how I thought I was pretty symmetrical. Just kidding. You, we both know I'm not. <laughs> but uh, you don't know where your problems are until you just explore a little bit. And then you start to see, oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go to the front of the chest, switch back to my soup spoon. Here, I like this one for right here. Okay, and again, I'm just going along that attachment right here. You can see the chest muscle coming up. So, and you can also do this on stretch, right? If you wanted to stretch the arm back, 
and get really aggressive. I've done that when I was doing more heavier athletics and I felt like I needed to just get it really open because I was kind of desperate at the time. But right now I'm in pretty, pretty good shape. So I'm just going to stick with what's comfortable here. And I'm going to kind of scoop out that, need a little bit more goopy stuff. Okay, I'm just going to roll across that upper chest, which I find to be incredibly important for the posture, right? Opening the throat chakra, the heart chakra stuff, this is all comes from the chest muscle caving in. If you want to be more easily open, this is such a powerful tool for that. And immediately, immediately I'm getting this huge response, right? Doing nothing different than I did on other spots. But I knew this morning this left collarbone area was going to be it for me. Ooh, look at this going all the way to the chest bone. And the other really nice thing about using the tools is that you can get friction onto the bony prominences in a way that you really can't with the hand. You can really clean out the collarbone, right? If I slouch forward, get the collarbone on slack, I can really get along the bone and just clean all this out. And I'm going to take this opportunity to ride up the, uh, oh, wow, look, this is just exploding, right? I'm doing nothing special, nothing different. Was just very ready to be cleaned out. Okay, it looks like my five day fast missed this section, so I'm here to help. Okay, so now this part of the collarbone that's so important for the neck is this attachment of the big muscle here. So I'm going to just spend time getting this whole collarbone attachment more free. Okay. Oh. Right, I need a little bit of goopy stuff on the neck. I'm going to try to get this whole muscle to lengthen up a little bit. So I'm just scraping down the neck. Hi, Shmuel. Hello. <laughs> Would you like to have your company? Everybody, anybody who wants. Yeah. Right now we have four viewers, but usually people are watching later also. But I'm beating myself up like crazy. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, right, just coming down the neck, following that same muscle line. You don't have to be so specific, you just look for where it's crunchy. And you can do the same on the other side, and you find this muscle coming down. And I know already, for, the, for me, this side is not so sensitive, you know? Yeah. Good. Okay, just clearing out all that stuff by the collarbone. All right, so we can apply this to so many. Wow, now you can really see the colors on my body, right? Look at how the circulation has come and destroyed my muscles. But remember, I did the same here as I did here. And here my chest was just ready to go, right? The same on the neck here. So it looks like I've been getting some compression in my body like this into this area. And so I would probably follow this up maybe with some light stretching, maybe not. Again, in the shower, I just go through everything real quick. You know, everything I did now, you can do in e easily in five minutes. Once you are comfortable working, you just, right? Because you can scrape very quickly. And easy, right? So for the face, we'll just spend a minute or two here, okay? I've got just a light film on my hand, so let me just add that here. Okay, so the only place you need to be really careful is uh, below the eye socket. It gets a little bit, uh, the skin gets a little bit more thin here, you know, so you don't want to press uh, where the sagginess of the eyes is, unfortunately. I've done it. It's fine. It's not going to hurt you. You can be very gentle. But I'll tell you, my favorite place is to work on the, on the head, for sure the whole forehead. Right, getting all the eyebrows is very soothing. Feels very good. Right. Oh, thank you, Shmuel. That was so generous of you. 
right? Coming down the temples. And this redness won't stay forever. Not like, not like this is going to stay for a few days. On the face, you're just very gentle. This in 20 minutes is going to be gone. So a lot of times I do this in the evening. So when you wake up in the morning, you have fresh face with new circulation and without the, uh, the marks on the body, okay? So you're coming down around. Oh, and the soup spoon's so good for getting underneath the ear, behind the jaw, and just carving out this whole shoom, 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 shoom. Right? So my favorite part's on the face, the forehead, and then the other two here, right on the nose, coming off the nose. Oh, this tension under the eyes. Sometimes this is like a lifesaver, you know? This feels really like gets the stress out of the face. Oh, maybe I'm getting some reaction here. No, nope, not so much. Just redness. But I feel this is a little bit more sensitive than the right side. And you can see how it's reacting quite a bit more. Again, I'm using really gentle pressure. You know, and scraping along the backs of the jaws. So good. Uh... Okay. And uh, normally I would cover literally the entire uh, surface, sure, certainly up in this area, getting the lips all loose, doing uh, under the chin, getting the, you know, separating all this stuff. But um, we're going to run out of time right now. <clears throat> so I didn't get to show you all my cool toys, but that was a pretty good home run about uh, generally how I use this stuff. Okay, so uh, if you followed along, that's great. If you just watched me raspberry myself all over, that's fine too. Okay, so I encourage you, if you don't have a decent toy, I would get one. Uh, it's fine to work with the butter knife and the soup spoon. It definitely works clearly, but um, it's a lot easier when you have a nice uh, tool that's easier to grab. And they do, I'll show you really quickly, they do make bigger ones for working on the legs and stuff, which I find very helpful. Right, this one's super chunky and not sharp at all. And uh, this one's actually really great also. I can work kind of along the, the neck. You know, I'll, I'll reach behind with one arm and just kind of like a handlebar it down, you know, or even like running across like this. But um, yeah, don't spend a lot of money on the tools because like we saw, anything works and some of them are outrageously expensive. They go by the name of myofascial tools, but they also, there is a technique called Graston technique, which is a therapy technique that revolves around these tools. And they will try to sell their Graston certified tools for just an absolutely outrageous amount of money. You definitely don't want to go anywhere near that. And then uh, the Chinese name for this is Gua Sha, G-U-A-S-H-U-A. And um, that you'll find a lot of cheap alternatives on Amazon. And that's where I started with my buffalo bones from like a Gua Sha toolkit. And then I thought it helped me. So I upgraded to the jade, which I broke like an idiot. And now I have the steel so that I can be an idiot and not break it. Okay, everybody, I'll talk to you all tomorrow with something new, okay? Have a great day. Bye-bye.